All right, in lieu of investing in a three-plane laser right now, which I've already done, and it'll be here day after tomorrow, um, I got the older Bosch three-plane laser that is red, not green, and um, runs on ordinary alkaline cells and stuff. Again, uh, I got it from CPO Outlets as a refurbished unit. Uh, half the price of what the new Milwaukee M12 green three-plane laser is going to cost me. And so for now, I'll run it with that older Transit, which has served me well, and I've never, uh, I've always been happy that I've got it, and it's not that big of a hassle so far. So we'll do the same thing with this Bosch three-plane laser. However, for today, Ed's going to stop by in a minute, and um, <clears throat> what we're going to do is we're going to measure from the the inside face of this wall out to there and to there and like I think I said earlier um, this is a larger gap right now so we're set up to draw it in with the come along we're gonna achieve that distance here but we're also gonna <clears throat> hang my eight foot level from that mark and make it plumb and strike a mark down the wall with a wax pencil and do the same thing over there and then at the top uh, of that line whether we do this before or after we'll snap a chalk line all the way across the ceiling from the top of it to the other uh, we won't have anything on the floor but we don't really need anything right now later it'll be nice to be sure i mean we can plumb these posts and stuff individually but it just is really nice to look down everything with uh, the laser and just know that you've or it, we can't really plot anything on the floor until we have a floor which we can't have first because we're going to pour it around these bases of these posts and lock them in so that's where the laser is nice because it'll give us a line and be, allow me to check these posts and make sure it's really tight uh, vertical perfect plane here that they're in before we commit to the floor pour so that laser showing up friday will help me to establish that yeah we got our work correct in here but it'll also be around and i won't be in the awkward position that i was in yesterday where i reach for something that i think that i can get and i can't get it and i can't get anything else that'll do what i want and so the old school method would have worked yesterday but Ed had already taken off for the day so it's just one of those things i can't really do without another person to the level of accuracy that i want that makes it worth doing um, so it's just one of those things, unless you want me to spend half the day here getting that done, which isn't what we want to do. We want to do it in 20 minutes. So to start with, we're going to throw that wood and stuff outside. I went up and looked. There's a big, I mean, I'm not lost on my own job site, but it actually didn't realize that much, is so much further away than this right here. So I'm going to pitch everything out here. The problem then is that you can't go out to the road with any of it without hiking it over the pile of dirt that's there already. So these are the little things that you can just get you all jammed up. Uh, I could go over here and fire it out, but I've got the LVL here. I might end up doing that just to curb that issue there. But uh, there's the stuff that's cool, and then there's all this stuff that we've got to do anyway. So if you guys want to watch it, this is what it looks like. So that's what it looks like when I take the garbage out. This bigger stuff, it can lay right there, I think, for now, until the skid steer comes back to the site and I'll roll right up on it. <clears throat> Load it in the bucket that one last time and dump it into the dump trailer. Um, so we'll just save moving that shit twice. We're picking it up again, really is the more important part. Uh, that's the old copper water line. I don't know why I keep saving it. I guess I could throw it in with the rest of my scrap copper at the shop for what little bit of a difference it makes. Uh, I'll take these pieces over, throw them on the other pieces, so these I will move twice. But you know, ooh, three times for you. Boy, it's a special boy. Is it my birthday? Put your ass here. Oh, as soon as Ed gets here, he's only about a half an hour behind when he said he would be, so I suppose it's his house. What's the rush? And then 
Ah, see, because I had anticipated laying one of those uh, lasers that have at least one plane, tipping him up on his side, which you can do like I showed you, but it just doesn't have an auto plumb and level feature anymore at that point. So, without knowing what surfaces on the device are relatively square to the laser, uh, which it didn't appear that there were any, I'll take this bad boy back. He was damaged at the store already. I'm not that guy, guys. Um, GLL 50-40G. So I just thought that I could sit him up on his side and get that plane. Uh, but um, I don't have a feature on him that's in, that it's trustworthy to be normal to the axis of the laser. And yada yada. So uh, I guess we'll go down and get some cursory measurements up and some other stuff. I need to renew my license because it was my birthday a week ago or so and it expired. So I was going to do that first and then meet up over here later to make the most of the day but now I haven't done that and I haven't got anybody to help me get the measurements up yet. This is my little... It seems like a simple thing but it's going to derail my whole day. And if Ed doesn't have a phone I can't do a status check on him. So... That is the case. Let's well, see what else we can do here while we wait. All right, I switched my um, uh, sling to a much shorter version around the beam, which allows me to get the center point, you know, up or down far easier. There's fewer, you know, times I have to wrap it. Would it be nice to have one that only goes around one time? Yeah, but it's not reality. So those are just Badland Harbor Freight brand tree slings for off-roading and stuff. I got them years ago. Uh, these 20-foot recovery straps, those are good for a couple tons at least, if not three or four tons uh, of, of weight or pressure or whatever. Um, that worked great to go out and around here. However, the other one doesn't quite meet up here. So the 20 feet, I need like a 25 or better yet a 30. So I get a 30. I got these two 15s thinking that I could feel good about that. Um, but they have hook ends. And so unlike a 30 foot with a loop end, I can't go through one end with the other. I don't like to go through a steel hook with the, with the strap. If I can afford, uh, if I can avoid it, I actually don't love to have steel hooks in here. If I, you know, the fewer the better. And these big um, sh uh, slings went to a shackle, and then the come alongs here. So I just gonna need a gonna need a longer recovery strap around these two window openings to pull on this side. Uh, I've already taken this up some, and the other thing is that you know the two by four plate should really be attached to the steel. So that if we're trying to slough things, even if it does move, I don't want to kick the plate out in some places. I mean, I want to be pulling the whole thing as a unit. And so I've started here and I'm pulling from the end and I've got a white mark there and a white mark down here. And so at every four feet, I'm going to make a white mark and I'm going to drill up through the steel with a cobalt steel drill bit um, in an effort to, I might even give it a little spritz of uh, Luby Dooby as our friend. Puddin' from Puddin's Fed Shop would say. Um, <clears throat> I do have some somewhere here. Anyway, and so I'll get all those pre-drilled holes. Uh, where's my... I've got a nice cobalt set from Milwaukee. I haven't even used for anything yet. I've got them. I have a set for at the home shop, but it uh, looks like a drill bit set. See that? whoop de doo um, But this is my road set now. So that's nice. Anyway... So I'll set that up and drill at least this one whole side. It's going to be unhandy. There's no point in trying to wrap the measurement all the way around to use the ladder to do both um, holes. So I'll be doing it on either side of the web up through the top flange into the lumber. Um, it'll be unhandy to keep the ladder set up and try to go on both sides. So I'll just go down one side and back on the other side. And we'll use these um, inch and a half, which will stop short due to the thickness of the steel, um, <clears throat> just to anchor, there's construction screws. Um, but that way this, the wood plate will be attached to the, to the steel I-beam. And then I'm also considering, 
um, committing to these post locations, although uh, I wanted to do that later. Um, so I might at least just wrap the steel tabs around the, the uh, bottom flange of the I-beam for now. Um, just for, again, an abundance of safety. Uh, so that'll take me to the end of today. And then uh, pick up tomorrow and keep going here. I mean, my goal this week was to get this beam placed exactly the poles, the posts, you know, just where we want them. The height of them adjusted so that it's level and be able to basically lock it in. And so it's going to, it's a short week to start with due to Memorial Day. And it's just been a couple half days so far doing other things around getting all the rigging stuff in here and set up. Uh, the laser debacle, you know, was part of that. But, um, you know, pr pretty, we'll be able to get, you know, to a good point by the end of this week, which is great. And then we can pick up next week um, and take this down and use it over here to fix that ongoing uh, stairwell issue. I just have more issues than I have temporary lifting shores, so it's forced my hand in the order of operations here. So enough talk. Let's do something. Okay, well, I just can't seem to get into a groove today. I've got all kinds of stuff done, but I just can't. There's something about just, again, a groove. Getting through a few hours consistently on a given task on the site without having to run out and do anything. I got down to all my markings and had to project them up because I couldn't easily pull tape from one end all the way down at the top. I could set it on the flange so you could see that. Uh, I don't want to compound error because if I'm at four feet <clears throat> and I'm trying to see that the end of the tape is at the other four foot mark from where I'm at, I can't see that it is exactly. It just compounds error. Who knows if it'll come into play? Probably not. Regardless, then I see that the four foot layout came in just shy of what is probably uh, an eight foot. I can't believe. No, 12 foot. Yeah. So it's a 12 foot stick. So I got three of them. Um, which worked out really nice, so I just double down here so I get a fastener at either end of either stick, and we'll do the same thing down here. Uh, I didn't put a mark there, but that's about how it'll work. And so all three will be, and I'll get some on the ends, obviously, down there and down there. So all three pieces will be secured on their ends and have two pairs of uh, attachment in the middle of them somewhere, and that'll be wonderful. I got the bar oil for the chainsaw to use as cutting fluid, but I don't have a center punch. Uh, I have one that you could just push and, you know, it, it'll fire and that's all you got to do. I don't even have an old school hit me with a hammer one here, so I can't start my drill bits reliably without running them all over the place, which is stupid. So I think I'm about done for the day. I'll bring that tomorrow. I'll bring a longer um, strap. I got to talk to the... Uh, what that was I got to talk to the architect about what we're trying to accomplish and the fact that our peers aren't at the locations that were called out for some reason by the drawing and so like this is over here some and so it's at a greater distance this and that um, in the drawing he wanted it over here four and a half feet from the wall uh, but our actual end of the house is there, and currently we're not even all the way onto the center of the pier here, but we're there. And so, that's based on where Sean dug when he asked me for the location, which I gave him as four and a half feet, but he didn't like that, I remember. Um, and so it ended up just wherever it ended up. So... There's some jazz we got to play here. House isn't going to fall down, but these are the little things that, you know, come up 
that you don't realize oh the other thing here is at the back of the house now we wanted to play this inside the footprint of the house a little bit for ease of setting this back down you know so like I said we have if anything here the new plate is actually a little outside of the old plate but we have so much thickness in the original siding and sheathing or no this is the original sheathing then there's a siding then there's a then there's a shake it's supposed to be clapboard-esque a shake and then the vinyl and so we've got a little bit of overhang overall but I was content with that being basically in the thickness of the sheathing and so someday you could come all the way back and take all of this off and resheathe this house and you'd, you'd be in really good shape which is fine and I saw that overall we got to exactly where I wanted to be here but then we get over to the garage and we've got some kind of discrepancy here I noticed with the distance behind there and then I started looking underneath here and I start seeing that's all exposed that's over an inch it's close to an inch and a half of plate and in here our new plate is barely under you know our old plate is kicked off now I thought for a second that it might have been the garage has kicked out but this is going to be held fast by being a feature on this other wall and it is that far off here so we have over an inch of an actual discrepancy that's played out a little bit here because the building wall is a little out of plumb but um, I don't know what we're gonna do about this they're not gonna want to hear that I'm not happy about it so and again here this seems to be wide but then grows to or tapers to nothing so maybe in coming over here and in going over that way some because it's far less pronounced here and it's definitely out of plumb there to look at it so it's gonna need a little bit of but the nice thing is nothing is stacked on here it's just a simple roof couldn't be any lighter and so once we have a floor in here I can lift with a temporary beam in my shores and take some weight off this outside corner and we can do what we'll see if you know making it all plumb if we can make improvements on the way that it has landed on this wall um, and then worst case scenario I have to get in touch with the concrete folks and say you know what are we gonna do about this? So I don't know. All in all, 98% legit. It's just such a big project that that one or 2% of things going a bit awry um, plays out in kind of a big, in bigger ways. So, just wanna be honest, forthcoming about some of the things that have gone right, some of the things that have gone wrong. Still have that extra layer of three quarters stuck in there. Um, I'm just stuck on this stairwell not being near anywhere near appropriately constructed. Uh, I can't really trust it at all. This side of it was always on an old foundation wall that was crumbling. The far side of it always had a blue lolly post where that post is and that big three inch slab of hardwood that I threw out the window. And so I'm uncomfortable moving those or removing them or taking any weight off until like for this one, I wanna be on our side of all the joists with that bearing, temporary bearing system, and in the case of the other one, I want to be on the far side of it with all that before I go playing there. And so to get that back, we've got to do what we're doing now, if I haven't made that clear, and it's just going to be uh, <clears throat> a product of working in order. So like I said, tomorrow I'll come back, we'll get the plate attached, we'll get the right strap, I'll see if we can pull this beam over.
Okay, that's what I like to see. A vertical line, vertical plane, all the way around the room, and thrown from one of these um, automatic leveling, if I shake this, uh, it's unlocked, this machine. There's a locked function where you can uh, lock the lines out and then you could tip them if you're trying to work to an angle or something like that. But for this, for our purposes here, and the nice thing is we did end up putting those lines up. Ed and I got wax pencil on the wall here so you can see that's right under the line. Same on the other side. And then I was looking at the chalk line. The issue with my nice heavy chalk line that we snapped. See, this is right under there. Well, yeah, good enough. Good enough. Um, <clears throat> most importantly, we don't want to lose accuracy doing three operations. If we've got one laser that's quite close to touching that line, it's quite good across the top here. The issue up there was we had multiple chalk lines that from the belly and the string and from two different people snapping it. Now we've got a real line there that I can trust for now. And we're just going to, it's offset from where I'm trying to be, but I'm going to basically measure... I'm going to be able to work on this side with a ladder and hang my tape on the far side of the beam. Unfortunately, it'll be on the wood, not on the steel. Well, I can, um, actually, the nice thing is I can hang on the bottom of the beam with the, with the tape, and the line will be thrown right on the surface where I'm reading the numbers, which is another nice quality of the laser versus the line here. So ideally, um, the laser is well worth it here. Um, you, you could do it old school, but you need more people and you lose accuracy. And The whole point of this is I'm trying to make a foundation for the project, see that, um, to work from. It's a fundamental component just like the outside wall is. And while the outside wall is probably not perfectly straight and square because it was built based on the house above, we can at least get this beam relative to it and start working within this envelope in a relative sort of way. So long story short, I've got down to what I want here. Ed and I got the other come along kind of set up. Uh, I got to, you know, mess around with this. I want to be pulling, if anything, toward the top because of the top is where it's got uh, friction dragging against the joists. The bottom is actually more free to pivot. And so if anything, we want to be, I don't know if I'm pulling toward the top, um, I may be tipping it up like that. Maybe I'm better off in the exact middle. We'll have to play around here and see. But the idea is we need to gain, I mean, I think basically I've established that like these concrete pockets, however incorrectly sized they are, for example, and I'll just do this live, it's, you know, 12 and a half inches from the right hand side or the I don't even know the outboard to the outside wall that we're measuring from the outboard side of the pocket is 12 and a half inches to the laser and over here you know what's the outboard side of the pocket to the laser over here it is essentially 12 and a half I mean the it's a tattered edge to the concrete but that's just about where we want to be on the laser and so <clears throat> That will help us at the ends. That means I'm, I'm trying to pull this steel beam over until it's essentially engaging with the concrete down here. And up there, I'm actually too high to touch it. It could tip over more so. But uh, it's essentially a good gauge down here to get to there. And then my ends are where I want them. And then from the midpoint, probably back behind us, is the problem area where we gotta continue to scoot and maybe a little bit more here. But this should be getting quite close to the correct location because again, it could be in here like serpentine. So, um, Ed's gotta get down here and help me. Uh, oh, I'm gonna put a positive stop. See, I wanted something basically where that plate is uh, to, if I'm, putting tension, putting tension, putting tension, and all of a sudden, zoop, this thing slides over suddenly rather than smoothly walking over. I don't want it to just, I certainly don't want it to go too far and, be, and become, I mean, the further it goes, the looser it gets and the easier it is to come out, and we don't want that kind of risk. And I don't want it to slam into this setup either uh, and disturb it at all because it's supposed to be taking the weight down here in a lot of ways to allow me to slide this more easily. Uh, would I like it if this beam reached over under that joist and that joist? Yeah, the weight is fully on this end still, which is making it hard, harder to deal with. Uh, I'm just down one lifting shore because I tweaked one irreparably. I gotta have the orange tube cut off the outside where it's welded here. I gotta have this outer tube that got bent. 
uh, replaced on one of my shores because I think the threaded column is probably okay. I'd like to think it's okay. If not, I'm in for a whole new shore. But So I'll probably do the as much as grinding and pulling that tube down and trying to get a sense of the straightness of the threaded rod. And very, at the very least, I'll have somebody put uh, the bottom plate onto a different tube of the same wall thickness and re-weld it back on up there where it holds on to the turn, to the nut that you turn. So long story short, I own four, but I'm down one. <clears throat> Otherwise, I'd get over there and lift a little bit with it as well. I had this three-layer beam made already. It's an eight-footer, I think, so I just brought him over from the shop, you know, ready-made. If I went out and bought three tens or went back to the shop and got three tens and took the weight off and replaced and went up and did all of that, there'd be that that could be done. I might end up doing that. All kinds of things that you could do here preemptively. Um, and then to skip them... And try to force stuff without them is also unwise. And so this has been a process of getting as much out as we think we need so far, try to see what we can get done, uh, encounter an issue, you know, add infrastructure and uh, an abundance of caution and safety, and then try again, see what we can get done, and then take stock and then add some infrastructure. Rather than gutting my entire shop and, and pulling strings to get over here on the weekend when I can get some help or whatever, whatever, we're just trying to move effectively here and we're just taking it one little step at a time. So blah, blah, blah. Let's see what happens now. All right, I think we're looking damn good here. And that's the thing about this process is like between getting this set up, getting those set up, getting the right length and combination of lengths to leave myself enough come along to actually put pressure on these. Because the issue is just hitting something like when you use a dolly against the back of uh, anything, uh, a chunk of steel or something to back up a hammer strike because the resonance and the bounce ruins all the progress that you make. So I need tension on these pulling over. So every amount that I drive it over with the hammer, it continues to move that way. I also, uh, down here, put some lines on. I struck uh, lines with the white grease pencil here to see that I was making progress as I struck it, you know, and how much progress I was making. This down here was about where we wanted to be when we touched the concrete wall. Now the location of the notch is good, but see at the back of the notch, it's a bit farther away from this wall here on the right than at the front of the notch. So while we're touching at the back, we're sitting open by a quarter of an inch, and that quarter of an inch is about what we've got for tolerance overall here now. And essentially for construction this big, in my world, a uh, quarter of an inch tolerance is what you're talking about having. So we're at, you know, 12 and an eighth at that post location. We're at, and again, we're, and we, you know, if the if the beam isn't in there perfectly uh, 90, then there's some discrepancy here. But we're at, you know, 12 and a quarter here. At the center post, we're at uh, 12 and a quarter again, essentially. As far as all the different tolerances that we're using here, the thickness of this line, uh, my hand being in the air at an angle with this tape. There's all kinds of like machinists would realize or recognize, you know, this is a heavy core. This is 5 16ths. Mm, no, but still a little bit more. And we get over here and we're at 12. And, so it's all within that. We're within that quarter of an inch. And so I'm happy with that, given the investment of time and money that's happened here kind of already. So, um... This thing is sweet. Uh, it comes with this magnet, and it comes with this uh, base thing that they call the whatever, BM1. It's the first ball movement um, that you can dial up and down. It sits on a spinny dinny doodah. Um, I'm going to turn him off to save battery. It does still take four AA cells, which was the bummer. 
this is the tripod from my transit so the bosch heavy like not all thread but it's like my thumb or maybe like my little finger i guess um as far as attachment to this thing it does have the quarter in the quarter 20 typical camera thread but bosch has got this heavier where's the bottom of the i don't want to take it off of it right now but the bottom of the transit has got that big big boy hole so it takes that and or a regular tripod and it's got this sweet little oh my god oh my god keep falling over um it's refurbished but brand new literature brand new bag brand new bracketry brand new case uh and the unit itself looks brand new and for 250 bucks shipped to me uh next day air even uh or maybe it was two day anyway it's expedited shipping that's a damn good deal the current one is just a green laser i might have more distance due to that or something but it's already um practically 500 bucks and uh and obviously the Milwaukee one that runs on the M12 battery is like 500 bucks. I could get it for like maybe 450. But then you got to talk about how much shipping's going to cost and whatever else. I'd really like those. However, I'll wait. Uh, this stuff will always be useful. That transit's already over 10 years old. Uh, the new one, the new version of it probably does very similar, but it's maybe green or something laser. Uh, it's $700 right now at Lowe's. So I think I got that for 350 and this for 250. So, so they've really that thing has worked for me. This is going to work for me for a long time. Long story short, would be nice to have Milwaukee not as a brand whore. I like the Bosch stuff. Um, I just have those rechargeable batteries lying around. Nothing worse than coming to use that transit and I need D cell batteries or this thing. I'll need double A. So I'll, I'll put up with it for a few years and uh, maybe when Milwaukee has a nice transit as well that runs on um, their rechargeable batteries, we'll get into the transit and the three plane laser or something. Or, Maybe I'll hit the lottery and I won't need to worry about it. Anyway, <clears throat> our beam is pretty damn straight. Pretty damn straight. And so now you notice I ran a couple screws in. I towed up through the plate, which has been attached now. I got that yesterday. I can't remember if I just picked up and went. So, yeah, so since I was blathering before, I did a right angle drill, cobalt drill bit, um, drilling operation every four feet on both sides of the flange along the top and ran an inch and a half um, construction screws into that plate, which held it on there for the sliding purposes. It'll hold it on there for now, for, unless somebody points out that it's not fastened well enough that I know of, it should be fine. Um, I'll tow probably at something like the same frequency. I'll put one at both ends, and between every set of these screws on the beam, I'll pick a joist and I'll tow the plate into that. And so then, really, that would mean that we could take these posts away, and while the house would collapse in a theoretical experiment, in a mind, in a thought experiment, the beam would hang on the floor joists up there due to this attachment that I'm talking about. Um, and so it's really well attached there. And then we could talk about how to take this down and use it to take to at least one of these to take some weight off next to each of these and put them where they've got to be i think i might have mentioned this guy is supposed to be over here which there really isn't a pier there anymore so i got the architect and the concrete people coming to look at that um so i will endeavor to place this one correctly and to replace this temporary shore with that one which is going to it's this one because that one has the u-shape for this location this one goes over behind me so that means that these two and that beam when ed gets here have got to be reset here to take the load out of the outside wall of the house to the best of our ability while staying out of our work zone and then i can tentatively take him down and make sure that his copacetic right there and start opening this situation up as well as take him over there and take my shore up to the elevation that it's supposed to be so that this top surface of this plate is level with the concrete over here and install him as well as locate him correctly on this pier and, and according to the drawing and then i can both bend his tabs around and drill and bolts you know nuts and bolts and attach him up there make sure that he's plumb and then i'll take this away and i'll have one free temporary shore and i'll have this shore set up over here and i can open this up and we'll get that thing turned into some layers and apply it to this joist so we've got a real heavy beam underneath the old outside wall of the house going from the sill plate to this um this new beam over here and the post under that will be that one and at that point i guess i'll be stuck because to get this loop out of over here 
I want to have this post permanently installed, and this post needs to be that post, and to take that post away to put here, this post will be down there where it goes, and so that temporary shore is going to have to be subbed in to this position in the interim. So I'll get my U-shaped head, which I brought here. Where are they? I've got a U-head on one of these shores. Did I bring it? Those are flat. Oh, they're on here. So I'll put a U-shaped head on my temporary shore and sneak it in next to this one enough to get this post out and put around this group of three layers. And then I can take the temporary bearing loop down and just move it over here to supplement that because while it's doing something, it's not as nice as being under like six or eight of these, well, not eight, but six or seven of these joists or whatever from here over, actually from that one over, because these two here at that point, once I'm underneath where this stuff is at, which will be out of the way because it'll be manufactured into this here, then I can work on these joists here and packing those out. I may even actually, no, I got the LVL in here because it was called for in the drawing and it's the exterior of the house. This can probably just live with a couple more layers of two by eight, which I don't think we have 16s. We got 12s here. And so if we're getting 16s, we better get them ordered because the truck will probably still be down. And if we're going to order them, we're going to get enough to sister all these joists through the whole house because they've always been spongy and bouncy. And with getting this electrical down and having all the room down here, it makes sense that and we'll take the bridging out and we'll get everything sistered. And at that point, we'll have the opening for the stairwell and the floor system constructed uh, in such a way that it would be structurally correct. It'd be better to do this distance with 2x10s and stuff if you're building this house from scratch or to move this beam over um, to a more central location where the spans are equal. But we couldn't do that, see, because we run out of joists. We could only really come over. I already went six inches, but we could have probably only done another six before we would have been right out from underneath the joists over on this side of the house. So... It isn't as though we would build it new when we're done down here, but it'll have the structural capacity that's appropriate um, of a new build in one way or another. And at that point, we can extend that sewer down and catch the equipment like toilets and sinks and things down here that we've been planning out. We're going to have to make final decisions on those and get that sewer routed all around out and over to there. And maybe by then they'll have an excavator that I can rent and get dug out to the street to repair that sewer line out to the street. And then... With that, the water will be rebuilt into here, and then I could probably quickly get to the hot water tank, as well as have the gas meter installed and get the gas to the hot water tank. Although I own an electric hot water tank, and I may bring it over here and, and hook that up, since that would get them in here more quickly. They could even keep it or something, I don't know. But um, the gas company and waiting around for them and yada yada is going to be something I don't really want to wait on before I can get the folks to move in here. So I may bring my electrical hot water tank over, set that up because there's power here already, and with the water supply and sewer re rebuilt, they would have water supply, and they'd have the ability to flush the toilet and use the sink. They'd have some power upstairs. We would begin to learn what has been lost because, of course, we've cut things off down here. Um, but they can run some extension cords and basically move back in here for the rest of the summertime kind of comfortably. We'll get them a gangplank going up to the old porch door because that's the shortest distance over the trench for right now. And so uh, the, the family moving home again is in sight. So let's, um, I guess we can time lapse some of this. I'm going to get this thing down. I'll have to come back and sister that last joist because first I have to do something over here. Or no, now I can be sure of the exact dimension of its length. Now I can cut the end of the one up here that's directly lined up to the sister that would go by. I think it's this one. So now I can measure over two inches from the edge and cut it off with the oscillating tool and take a measurement from that rough end to the back of the um, rim joist over there and make something just a little shorter and go up and get it slid up, stood up and installed on top of this while it's here. And then I may even shoot these in with some nails. Another thing I was going to mention is I kept talking about how to put these together with four nails every 16 inches. I'll probably do something lighter than that because frankly a two by eight in this location doing this span is good enough and he's the new ones are both on top of this beam and on top of the sill plate out there and so they don't necessarily have to be physically joined to the old one however they're going to brush past each other and creak and groan to some extent so you do want to att attach them but i probably don't have to attach them um you know and need any kind of code for that that i know of because uh, I could have just not sistered them and left all this notching, and it would have been grandfathered even if it was a structural concern. So, And this here would have been grandfathered even though it's a structural They may not have let me grandfather that. At some point, they're going to tap out and let me 
just live with structural concerns to the extent that these two sides of the stairwell are. I mean, this whole house has been just falling down in this area. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, well, when Ed shows up, I can do more significant stuff because I need a hand here, but I'll work a little while until I see, until I see him. Let's, let's time lapse it. All right, I got the weight off of this thing and uh, doubled that joist that did make it to the beam, but it is in fact a beam down there, as well as this is a beam for these joists, and it uh, is attached to that joist, so it was well worth doubling, uh, at least. <coughs> now, <coughs> It is just as well the exterior wall of the house as that, however that's a longer span. I end up, may end up, uh, I'm gonna end up with, to be under this wall, one, two layers of LVL probably on the right hand side of that joist. And so it'll be wider than that gap, I'll have to take that off. I'm just talking about whether or not, thinking about whether or not, see, it's three layers from there. Yeah, it's essentially three layers just all the way to there. It's probably thick enough. But down here, it's, I believe, I'm gonna add both LVL layers to this because I wanna be more underneath the um, exterior wall of the house, which you can see the sheathing is there, and so the framing of it is here. And so I won't be at I was th thinking maybe I'd put one on either side of this choice, but they're going to both go on this side. And so then we'll have a nice heavy beam with a post under it, and it trussed out and everything appropriately over here. Three layers thick, solid lumber. I could add a layer if the architect really doesn't like it, no problem in the future. Um, these have all, all this blocking and cocked up cutback bullshit has all been 
fixed and we're over here that butts up to the end of this one which is going to go eventually i don't have ed's help and it's about lunch time so we're going to bug out and get a lunch when he's here we'll break this thing down take it over there take the weight off take this thing out take it over there crank that up to correct and install that thing exactly where it belongs and then we may proceed to go to this one and maybe even that one the thing about that one is it's loaded more so than the rest of them in a lot of ways that's why it's heavier why it has a bigger pier I may want a shore on either side of it in which case the one that I'm using won't be enough and these two will be occupied over here so I may have to pause there on going to full elevation and get this replaced and constructed and get this post in underneath it and run down slightly tightly slightly tightly um, and then maybe the thing to do is actually use that one shore here under the new beam to crank the fuck out of this and get it from there to there at the right elevation and install that post permanently and at the right elevation. And then here will be low but preloaded with this elevation over here trying to sort of lighten it. And then I'll be able to get one, two, or even three shores if I needed it, which I doubt, in this location to crank it up to perfect and get him adjusted out correctly. Um, I'd like to do that today. Even though we can't get any closer to the wall like we should be, as the architect says, um, we can look at that at another point. Uh, next week sometime the concrete people are going to look at that discrepancy out at the back wall of the garage as well as this pier discrepancy here for me and uh, we'll talk about how and what to do about that so I guess uh, see if we can't come back and roll when Ed's here to help me move that lifting setup all right Ed and I got this thing moved up into this area I didn't realize he mentioned here it's a good idea we can be under this last joist I was thinking that'd be the last one but since I'm adding everything to this side of that one it's out of the way to be right there which is real nice and I took the weight off of that post and it came free no problem didn't make a didn't make a squeak uh, the short week move garbage pickup day so we have three loaded bins by the road that won't be emptied probably until tomorrow so we'll get the tarp set up here to throw garbage on I gotta uncover this whole area and pull the electricity down and out of it. Measure up, cut that joist tip back, measure up and add a couple layers, and then clean off and I guess get that other shore. Uh, I can't get a U-head on it because they're being used here, I guess. Shit balls. To run back and get a U-head for that other shore and put him in place of this one and then put him over there. I'd like to be there by the end of today, so let's see if we can get that much done.
All right, well, I got the, I don't even know what you want to call it, just a bottom cap off and uh, one side of this off. And, um, I mean, all three components are doing nothing, and you can be sure they're doing nothing uh, because it's like they end here. And so there's some vertical uh, confabulation bullshit there. i got to hack off. These are the, you would think, the ends of those boards, but they're not, because it obviously doesn't line up. So I think those will probably come down when this stuff comes down, um, <clears throat> which will mean that we'll need something that thick. I almost don't want them to come down with this, because uh, I want to have everything packed up tightly. And so... Edgeways 2x8 on this is still underneath the subfloor until this point where there's nothing, but then once again the same sort of thickness. So <clears throat> I guess to start with I'm going to cut this crap off flush and then I'm going to run out and down this crack between the old sheathing boards and this joist and that's where you're going to have some added strength in these two layers I guess on that joist, but the joist is on the end of this beam now. I might just tack it. I mean it's an abundance of safety. It's probably not going to slide. There's no lateral forces here. Um, but it won't hurt to put a pin through and into that last choice since it's just right at the flush end of this temporary beam. Then I'll cut right on by with the sawzall all the way down. And then if it's still stuck, I'll know it. I'll probably try and open a gap and slice along under those boards and leave them there. Because if I can get two layers onto this side of that old joist back here of LBL, put it all together, and then those are overhanging. Either I'll just cut the nails off and leave the tattered edges of them because this is a cost mitigation thing. Uh, I'm not going to go so far as to tidy this all up. It'll be all whatever black mold splatter and holes cut in the drywall and all that when we're calling this project done because this is a, a budget project. But um, if I can't get that done, I'll have to find something. I'll get a strip of three-quarter inch plywood and set it up in there to the extent that I need it or whatever. Uh, I'll give you a different angle. Let's see. How does this look? All right, so this is a renovation school. Class is in session. Oh, what is that? That's the end of an electrical wire. Okay. Um, I got all that stuff ripped down. At some point, the battery died, so I got ye old supplemental power unit uh, connected up now. And weirdly, uh, I want to say, yeah. The bottom plate of that shit went right over in here as sole plate. Oh, because it was the sole plate for the outside of the house. So the sole plate here turned, came along the outside of the house. House. The joist I took down that came over and was stopped short was the original rim joist. And then this one right here was probably the original that was on a layout, a 16-inch center layout or whatever. He stopped here. Uh... Or at least they just closed in the top area of the wall. So anyway, it went right out over into here, so I had to dig it all out of there. And then I need a piece of sill plate. 
and the drop from the end of that sister joist behind me from earlier today that had to butt up with this, to this old one that laid here on the floor was weirdly the perfect length, so I, length, so I smashed him in there. But <clears throat> this, where's my, that's a big step. Here we go. This lumber is from a time, it's not rough sawn, or it would be a true two inches thick. It's inch and three quarters. Today, dimensional lumber is two by whatever, but it's an inch and a half, which is what that is. And so we've got that problem with this piece. We've also got daylight peeking in there, which you can't see because my headlamp, there it is. Uh, but it's because of that extra three quarter inch board down there that's stuck underneath. Where's my fucking hand? It's a board, it's hot and I'm covered in filth and I'm irritated that every step of the way uh, there's some fucking bullshit. Um, which is why this is renovation school, see, because nothing's ever easy. Um, that's gonna come back out, it's not gonna work for us. I'm gonna need to find a piece of this inch and three quarter from the pile of shit that I ripped down, which there'll be some, and I'll make a piece and push him in there. But then if you peek out here and you look, and you see he's pushed out a little bit beyond the edges of the other two pieces, so I'm gonna have to dial that and get a piece basically all down in there. And then, you notice the way we build now. The rim joist turns and the rim joist goes, and then you have subfloor boards on everything. And then you put your sole plate to your wall, which is, this is the 2x4 sole plate, and there's a stud on it. This is just superfluous bullshit, but this is the, this is the actual location of the wall plate for the living room and this other room, or something like that. For some reason, oh, there's a step up. Ugh. This is all within the landing step that's higher between that room and this room at the end of the stairs upstairs, which you can't do nowadays, I don't think. Yeah, you can't do that. Uh, regardless, as a best practice, to start with, I can't make, these are gonna be seven and, now that's a good question, these are gonna be seven and a quarter, or are they gonna be seven and, what are these, seven and a half? Yeah, or seven and five eighths or more. So I gotta make sure I can get two, which I can because that's 16. So I can rip two of any width that I need here, but I want to be careful of the width that I need. And you might say, well then make it what you need from the silk plate that you put in from here to there, and just put them in there, which is, in theory, would be fine forever. But it's not correct. They need to be this high, and then they need to have a subfloor layer on top. You see down there, the subfloor comes, the top of it comes in planar with the bottom of this wall. But as we come over here, there's this extra thickness that opens up from about Oh, I don't know, right there, and over here we're at a quarter of an inch or something. So there's going to be that gap. I'm not going to build these pieces so that they're tapered and they take that up or anything, but I do have to put a piece of three-quarter inch plywood uh, four inches wide or five inches wide across the top of this all the way over to those boards, boards, <clears throat> after I go through puberty. Um, i got to cut that thing down, off we got to come through and come through right over this empty space and butt into these boards here that are going to get cut back. So that's a good question because when we cut those back, there'll be nothing carrying the little pieces. No, there will be because our three layer or our two extra layers is going to come through here, but they will just be sitting on top of it. They'll be pinched in there. It'll be fine. Uh, cause it's like, then all of a sudden you gotta know when you gonna, where you're gonna cut this back to in order to do that. So we'll get that cut down. <clears throat> We're gonna need to get some rips of plywood that we don't have on the site and we don't have a truck to get it today. Put those up first. And so, I think we're at a point here where, I don't know, we might be done for the day. Go home and make those rips and set them aside, ready to bring them over on Monday. I've got work truck wrenching to do all weekend, so going home to get those, making them, and coming back here isn't in the cards today. Uh, so this is how you go from being able to just throw two layers on there and put this post under it on that pier and walk away and have that much progress on a Friday. It doesn't happen until middle of a Monday or later uh, due to all that, but then everything will be correct and the way that it should be. I haven't completely made my mind up yet. I really wanted that to be done today. Uh, drive all the way home and push plywood through the table saw. Actually, I might have some 
one foot wide strips or something. Maybe I'll go see if I can find some thin rips and throw those on the car and bring them over, bring them down to the final ripping here on the horses. <sighs> yeah. Okay, so the battery died on me somewhere there. And, and so I wanted to make some visual progress today is a Friday. Always feels good to leave off on something with something handled. So uh, this was your old sill plate and this was the old outside corner of the house and so it was a 50-50 chance here that this one passed and the, and the other one butted into it but in fact this uh, sill plate passed and this sill plate butted into it. So that's what I had to dig out from the bottom here. I didn't realize it was a sill plate because it was cut short over there and then the old rim joist and the old, I don't know what they did, there was like on the, it may have been on the same floor layout but more likely they just wanted something on the inside face also, which you really don't want uh, because you want to be able to insulate that if you end up putting a joist on the outside as a rim and on the inside of the sill plate when you're building a floor and then you cover it with subfloor you never get into that cavity with insulation so if anything you want to leave it open um, and if it does work out to be right on layout where it's closed off somehow you want to put an insulation bat on uh, while you're there so regardless took all that stuff off and now the way that this is built see this is your uh, plate for your wall and there's a stud and so that's built onto the subfloor and so now I put this piece in because this is the drop off the end of the joist that I chose to sister that was aligned to the one here and I needed to cut a little bit off and it was literally exactly the perfect size except for it's inch and a half and it's you know it's nominally two by eight so it's inch and a half by seven and a quarter however this structure is from an era um, that's not rough sawn so it's not true two by true eight but it's milled uh, less than we mill lumber down today or finish it uh, so that's one and three quarters thick by seven and a half, uh, which is also what's going on with these two by eights. They're seven and a half, um, and so in sistering, we're adding a second piece of lumber to the side of every joist, and it's doubling their strength and it's doubling their rigidity. So it's going to take a lot of the bounce out. But when they turn up in here, they aren't going to come extremely tightly necessarily because of that. Uh, reason because the new dimension of the lumber is seven and a quarter so we'll have a quarter of an inch for the most part but some will be a little tight and some will be a little loose because overall the tolerance there is relatively um, it's not perfect so dig him back out find some of this old material from that pile of shit that I ripped down replace him with that we're light here because there's you know and there's a gap to the outside there because of that three quarter inch board down there that I keep mentioning holding us up so everything's gonna sit down here when I get that out as well as when I let pressure off here and dial everything in you will also notice that there is a quarter of an inch above the subfloor here that dies about there and the rest of it is the rest of the bottom of this uh, sole plate to the wall is relatively coplanar with the top of those boards Regardless, I'm glad that I got, I went the route of buying the 16 inch LVL because I can get two seven and a half rips out of it. If I'd have bought seven and a quarter LVL, which is sold to stack up next to seven and a quarter actual two by eights, it would have been loose in here again to, you know, to some extent like that or something. So I'll make true seven and a half. I won't make what we need here total because it's not best practice to just stick the top edges of framing up. Um, just to reach this, it should have a layer of material under it. It wouldn't be a best practice to put solid wood under there because that's janky. So we'll use plywood, which means I had to run back to the shop. Uh, we're on a budget here. Where did I go with it? I bring it in. There it is. I got a piece of three quarter inch plywood that makes sense to rip up. I'll make some five inch rips of him because um, LBL is inch and three quarter wide, <sighs> which is uh, five true actual. Um, inches wide. I think I'll probably make the two seven and a half inch rips on the bench, sit them up, and then rip that up at five inch strips and apply it to the top. And then that whole assembly will go up in there somehow, which is going to be tough because. 
I'm probably gonna have to bust this stuff out. Already I did some of this, but I gotta, I gotta, uh, there's already some wood there. This just keeps, just, you realize, this is all like finished with hardboard or plaster because it was cold air return, or heat, it was the heat register supply because there at the bottom of these stairs, upstairs, is a landing two steps up, and so it's two steps down to the la left and two steps down to the right, uh, right against the outside wall, which is kind of from this era, but I don't even think you can get away with building a house like that anymore, and so like this, like, hood in here, this all this filth, look at that, oh yeah, forced air, love me a forced air house, right? And then the duct cleaning company shows you on the commercial going straight down a beautiful current modern day duct that's a little dirty or you know even if it's filthy they're just going to zip right down it with their duct cleaning equipment and your all your ducts will be cleaned out what do we do in this house what do we do up in here where this is all closed in and custom and you know now i'm in here and how, how are we getting that cleaned out were we ever gonna know we weren't so anyway the heat comes out at the under in the riser face of the lowest step on both sides i expect at least on this side anyway that's what it is there so we got all this hard plaster shit to bust out of here because we're going to be overly long here. We got to swing in and. No. No, no, no. We can go past through that bay and then come over in here. And as we basically bang into the rim joist, we'll be able, because we'll have come to the right length, we'll just slide right over with the two layers and stick it to this. Uh, and then we'll come around to the other side and shoot it up to make it all one piece. And this might sit open, you know, it'll, it literally, it will sit that much open over here until we let everything sit down and relax and come together and whatever. I'm not gonna add a sliver piece down here to accommodate the fact that it's like that. It shouldn't be in some of this construction and renovation. Too much of that or really almost any of that building to suit weirdness. Um, unless you're doing it with millwork, trimming, final finishes and surfaces because you know that you aren't going to make anything any better than this and this is the last layer, well then fine, that's a component, a major component to finish carpentry. However, in structural and um, fundamental construction, uh, I'm not about to do that because then it compounds through everything right up to the top and then you do have a lot of that to do in a finishing situation. So our job here is to turn everything back to original copacetic dimensional stuff leave layers that are the same thickness to stack up together as one. Don't leave any cracks or gaps and, uh, and hold things off like that. If anything, leave them open so they can settle down and shut together. That's sort of a best practice. There's some um, exceptions to those rules, but very infrequently. So that's what we're doing. Let me um, dig that scrap out, make a piece for there, rip up this LVL, rip up that plywood, stick it on top, go up and uh, cut that thing short down to what we need, Go and get a total length measurement, cut the construction that we built on the bench down to that total length, put it up in there beyond what we need, and then come back this way on the ladder until it'll sit back in there, and then clamp it there, and then nail it together, and then probably piece out, because I don't want to take this down. Um, even though I went home and got that, I didn't get a third U-head, so I haven't got one to throw on that. And that's still being used there without that. So we're going to stop where I just indicated today, I think, called the weekend, which is fine, which is in, in um, it's just, it'll be essentially where I want it to be. The things that will be left will just take a, an hour or something next week, which is fine. I'm trying to keep these steps and these goals by the week um, sort of organized and also to release video weekly. And, but I'm not gonna kill myself on a Friday afternoon when I'm gonna spend all day working this, or all weekend uh, wrenching on the work truck too. This will just be what it is, all right? You guys, you have a problem with that? You can, uh, I'll see you in court.
All right, well, this is the point in the project where you should probably just hang it up. It's not wildly unsafe, it's just that point where I'm, it's nearly seven. I've been at it all day, it's hot, it's high 80s. Uh, I'm not taking this back down, but I finished carpentry myself. Uh, but it's just a, it's a hair too long. I'm gonna take a full quarter inch off just because I've learned my lesson. Not so far as never running into this problem initially, but the first amount that I take off in the past wouldn't be enough, and the second and the third back in the day it'd take 20 amounts, 20 uh, CHs. I don't know why I shoot for such a perfect fit. Um, anyway, I'll take a quarter of an inch off this guy right here in the air. I'll set him down on top of the eight foot ladder. I'm standing on the six foot ladder. Uh, try and make it so you guys oh can i turn the camera around is that something that's possible for t i feel like hang on look at that uh that's helpful so let's lay this out and buzz it off quick i want to the next thing is going to be trying to slam it get it to turn a lot of times on such a bouncy stick at such <clears throat> a different you know wildly separate ends I might get this to go and then go down there and beat on it and it undoes this and I come back down here and it undoes that. Sometimes you can chase your tail. Let's hope that doesn't happen. Back ass rear side of the saw. Can't do the old cut to me. The whole point of this, whatever. It's not secure, don't hang your weight on it. Um, that's irritating. Really want to cut with most of the shoe on. Includes uh, end of workday midair circular saw tricks. Um, let me get the saws out and finish that. That's part of my argument against a worm drive saw for a right-handed cat that's the one situation <laughs> where it would be handy because I could have pushed through with my right hand from my side and the majority of the shoe would have been on here for registration to keep this cut at 90 degrees to this <coughs> But if you're a boss, once in a while, once in a very great while, you can just push the sidewinder to yourself and get the job done. <clears throat> uh, nothing wrong with a worm drive saw, it's just not a right-handed person saw. My ladder 
setup is wrong because I am right-handed. And while I can run the sawzall on the left-hand side, it's not as nice as running it on the right side. saw it finish that cut instead of pushing like the daylights you'll split it out and regardless of the finish quality you'll have pieces that are still attached so just let the saw make the cut my grandpa would say that blades dull enough to ride the buffalo on it this is where you want to be thinking about not just yanking something toward yourself and being sure that you've got it on something over there because if it falls off over there it'll clean you right off the ladder your legs can go in the ladder and you can break a knee. My buddy's dad had his legs in a ladder when he got knocked off of it and it wrecked him up. So just be thinking about that. I'm fairly certain that this will be just what we need no more. Or shouldn't have said that. Should not have said that. Let's go see what we got, eh? Uh, I'll check and then if it's good to go, we'll move you angle. So, uh, got to turn you around. Um, does it miss that end over there? Also, we got to come back out and open the angle a little bit. Hang on. Hang on. A kingdom for a cameraman. Yes. Success? No. Can we just hit it? Can it be struck into submission? Oh, come on, please. Oh, it's right there. It's going. You're going. Man. Will it cause us problems if we are that tight? There we go. gotta do is turn it up and beat it down and I just don't have there's no way I'm gonna need assistance I'm gonna need assistance in fact I only nailed it every so often because there's a I have a nagging feeling that we'll have to do one and then the other one I just wanted to Due to this being such a great aspect here to try and turn a corner into there, it's just asking a lot. So this may be a take it all the way down, take it apart, go up with the first layer and the top plywood, put him in place, and then add the second layer. Uh, I can tell you right now, the wise choice is not to continue to try and gorilla press stuff up in the air here by myself with ladders involved at the end of a hot long work day over the end of day that I usually take it's a recipe for disaster for me and my body which has to be in tip-top shape to complete this and many other tasks so we're gonna call it quits there 
Uh, we'll kick things off in the next video with... You know, I don't know why I'm compelled to make a video for you guys this weekend. Let's just hold off. We'll get that up and we'll get this other side of the uh, stairwell handled and then we'll put a video up, okay? How about that? All right, Monday morning. This is why I don't rush and little red flags go off in my head when I start feeling compelled to make visual progress. Um, sometimes I have the willpower to avoid it and sometimes I succumb. So last week, Friday, I succumbed. Is that the word? I succumbed? Uh, I just wanted to see this up there. And I don't know why I had it in my head that together with two layers of that uh, strip on top that would make it a tight fit to this area that I could get it to roll up. Because, of course, the wider it gets, the, um, <clears throat> the longer the hypotenuse between the two outside corners of it, which makes rolling things into position that are more square in aspect ratio instead of tall and thin, a big pain in the ass if you understand what I'm talking about. Also, we don't need that extra, that three-quarter inch plywood layer from here all the way to that end. And so basically I need, basically, I need to get the dimension from here to there to that board. And then shy of that will all be all the uh, three-quarter inch plywood that's on the bottom here that needs to be on there. So I'll cut him off. In fact, it may work out to that um, short piece that went on at the end. Uh, I was just so excited to get to processing that piece and stuff, yada, yada. So uh, I had to pull it down carefully, um, and now I've got it opened up, which is, again, I think I might have said at least that I didn't go hog wild pinning everything together. Same here. I didn't go hog wild pinning that together. I do it for this reason. Once in a while, I take a pause when I get to a certain point on a project, and I'll run around with screws and nails, and I'll put everything together completely. Or, you know, we held off of putting the plate on until I was ready and I went along and drilled and mounted, you know, that plate on top of the I-beam like that. The posts haven't been adjusted, but at some point here we're going to come through and the posts will be finalized, they'll be bolted and nutted and whatever, whatever. For now, it's making it easy to pop this apart. I'll peel that top layer off separate. I'm going to put one, two LVLs in because, of course, they'll turn up and sit there without an issue. And then... I'll just slide the three-quarter plywood underneath. Um, no, I don't want it just sitting in there. So, you know what? I'm probably going to go up and put the plywood. I'll just nail up. I'll tack the plywood up to that plate from below. And then I will I can turn the LVL into position. And so I'll know that I have the plywood just exactly where I want it and know where I don't. Ooh, am I going to cut the landing back? Because if I go to there and then I cut the landing back, then I'm missing that surface again. Although I can come in zoop, onto the LVL and in theory, to some extent, I can slide in. Although I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to leave the boards that are there. We're not going to replace subfloor. So, oh no, it's... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Jazz. So just relax. So just go to there, and then there'll be subfloor completely on the beams. And if anything gets cut back, it'll be cut back at this edge. Okay, see, don't get ahead of myself. I'm going to get this stupid, I think it's thermostat. Ah, I shouldn't cut it. I was going to keep that. That's thermostat, and I don't want to have to refish that. That's a day spent farting around if I'm not careful. Next thing you know, compounding, so we'll leave and work around those because we can. So, yeah, so let's pull this apart. We'll put the plywood up with nails. We'll slide one LVL in and then the other LVL in. Far safer taking one layer, although I've done it now up and down the ladder both ways, but um, far safer. Boy, that double entendre is flying fast and thick around here. Um... <laughs> anyway, you heard me. I'll put the single layers of LVL. It'll be easier and um, safer to carry less weight up and overhead and try to put it up. Let's set up the camera and watch watch that happen.
Okay, that went far more smoothly. I don't know what I was thinking. Just trying to take a big bite at the end of the day, like I say, last week to see something happen. That's where you can make errors that are a problem for safety or uh, you know, all different types of things. So my, just like I said, a little red flag was going off in my head, but uh, I was hoping to get something to cap this video up and get something to cap up the week that I kind of, it was a short week. Spun my wheels, getting everything together to pull the beam safely, and um, what else? Oh, waiting on the laser to make sure. It's just so easy to measure, too. Putting a line on the ceiling and stuff. I think I said we snapped it, and we ended up with two lines, and I mean, if it's a half an inch between them, then what's the point of even trying to do anything here if our tolerance is going to be half an inch? So, I don't know who's messaging me, but... So now, I think that... I can set up the laser and crank up this temporary shore until it puts the top surface of the plate at the same elevation that the top surface of the plate is not only, this is a bit, I think this needs a little bit more height actually. <coughs> I think we're going to end up on this footer and picking that up and sliding another three eighths or half of an inch in there. So it won't be based on the, anywhere else on the beam. I'm going to use the, um, top of the old plate I'll just get an idea of where it is around the, the perimeter of this house and we'll start shooting for that here and then we can because I left it to the side here we can place this uh, actual post according to the drawing it should be where here according to the drawing we're looking for here's the location of it here so we're looking for eight foot three inches to there which puts us where here Pull out my tape. Eight foot three is ninety-nine, which is yeah, there-ish versus there. So if anything, we're a little to the one side of the pier. I don't know what was so hard about putting these piers in the right spot here. Really struggled with that. Um, I didn't feel like climbing in and checking all of that stuff because it's like. If these folks do what they do all the time, then they know just exactly how to follow a drawing that they've had since the beginning. So we've got a few discrepancies with concrete right now that I'm a little frustrated, but I think that that'll be okay with that one. Over there, we're going to have to maybe do something. So uh, let's do that much anyway. Okay, so I thought hanging it just off the floor would allow it to be plumb, but there's just too much based on the exact angle of the plate that's on top of this and the exact angle of the bottom surface of the I-beam. By tightening them two together, it actually pull was pulling it way out of plumb. So at this point, <coughs> I've plumbed it for the most part very close. And so then I traced the plate on the floor, which is hard to see with a white uh, grease pencil. And so now, if you're just close to that location while tightening, you're not losing the plumbness here. Um, epic plumbness. I'm going to keep it clamped up there. Essentially what I'm getting at is I want to take the weight right off of this because I'd feel better about a U-head on top. Um, I just feel a little better about it. And we need one anyway because when we get done using it there, we've got to use it here to get this guy out to put him there. So the only thing I forgot to bring today was the U-heads. I'll run and grab those, grab a lunch, and uh, boogie back. 
we'll get this thing up. It's just uh, a lot of pressure, and I like wood better because steel is just has got the coefficient of friction that you want until it doesn't, and then like zoom things zip and slide and whatever else. So I feel better about the U-shape head on the top of it. The concrete surface on the floor is fine. I might even put the um, a piece of LVL blocking there just for kicks. But uh, then we'll go right up with this thing using the laser. I need to go maybe an inch to an inch and a quarter here in height, if you can believe it. And then we'll extend this guy down and keep him kind of plumb. And then we'll bend his tabs around on top. And then we can get out of there with that shore and get this thing out. Meanwhile, I'll hunt Ed down because I'm going to need his help. Okay, well, while Ed was here, he moved this beam over to lift and take that little piece of extra wood out. We couldn't get enough power with the three shores. We ended up with this heavy shore in one window hole. I was thinking we might need the other. I, have th I own three of them. This is the 13 HD, so the HD series is the heavy-duty series. My other shores aren't even the HD series. 
but the 13 is good for 13 inches to 20 inches and 52,000 pounds or what is that about 25 ton 26 ton so now all we got to do is take these all three of them down and then we can go over and try to lift up look at that you can kind of see the belly in the floor we need an inch and three quarters here and almost an inch and three quarters there inch and a half here and we'll be nice and level Okay, well, phone died a little bit there. Ed and I were in here. We came over to the wall and lifted, and I swapped those two layers of treated for one layer of LVL, which is a little thicker, and then a strip of plastic, uh, you know, on top of that to hold it up, sort of, just as an additional shim, basically. Ed had some like one eighth inch ABS plastic solid. And then down here, I uh, got something in here for the time being, two layers of LVL and half inch plywood. Um, <clears throat> I got the posts, the permanent posts on the locations that they are called out in the drawing. And I see that I was too, uh, I wasn't right in there, up their asses um, between uh, the excavation and the concrete to make sure that these were happening exactly dead on the right location uh, so you know we're over to the side on those so that might <clears throat> I don't know we'll have to see what the town thinks about it and see what the architect thinks about it um, I don't want to have a failure here this one like I was saying needs to be over there farther so I may if I'm digging to expose and pour a little more you know this is 3500 psi concrete or something so I'll just get a little bit more and make a little bit more of a pier if I need. Uh, yeah, you know, it'd be nice to be right in the middle. Could I just move it over so that it is on the middle? Probably. And so we'll just get everything. This is mostly getting this level and located side to side for right now. My temporary shores aren't going anywhere. And if we're up to practically where we need to be and everything else, if we've got to come in and take a little weight off so that this is loose and slide in like over, even up to a foot or whatever else like that, no problem to do. I just want to get um, things real close to level upstairs because all the rest of this is going to be based on the existing structure, and I want to base it on a square, plumb, and level existing structure. Uh, the other thing I got to do is the other side of the stairway here, which our lumber is coming tomorrow at some point. I got spruce, two by eight by sixteens to sister all of these. Uh, I'm not sistering this one, this one, this one with a sixteen footer because it's short to there. It's twelves will do those. These are already doubles, and so if you just count from here to you know whatever there. The few here, I'm going to use Doug fir, three or four layers right here, solid basically. So, uh, and then spruce again throughout all of these to the back. And the spruce is going to be plenty of additional strength to the existing joist, which is the point of that. Uh, the Doug fir is going to be making a beam over here. I don't mind springing. He's like 18 and change each. The spruce is $15 and change each, so it's a good savings. We'll get all of, uh, we'll get most of what we need. We'll get it all for $500 or less plus delivery, which is like 25 bucks or something. But I can't put anything over 14 on the rack of my car, and I definitely can't put like 20 sticks on my car. And my truck is still broken, so that'll show up. And as soon as I've actually got the dug for here, that's what I'm kind of getting at, and then I'll go ahead and rip this off. I'm also going to get Ed's help to go up here with a shore and across underneath these with the beam and back down with another shore to just hold this group off while I rip these, you know, kind of to pieces over here. And I expect for that to give me the strength that I need without much of an issue because they're there by themselves and they're practically cut clear through and broken. And I didn't hear anything when I came and took the shore away to put him there. I just took a little weight off just to see if I really needed him and he just came right down without any creaking. And so there's a little bit of engineering happening in this project and a lot of like experience wait and see you know abundance of caution those types of things um and so we're, we're at that point now tomorrow is uh gonna probably see, if i get that lumber we'll get most of the other side of that stairwell built and then we'll wrap this thing up that's kind of my goal here and we'll call this this video you know we can say that we did the structural repairs down here all right we'll see you Okay, now we're, I want to say Tuesday, yeah. 
So, not that I'm putting full days at this is the thing. We're getting set up and different things here and operating on this and then, so we haven't got days and days, like over a week. It was a super short week last week. Half, uh, half the week was a work week, basically. So if we can get to this in the next, in the rest of today, basically, or even a little bit of tomorrow, we'll have stuck to the schedule, which is to essentially fix all the structural problems with within a week or so. That's sort of how I look at time for a project like this, is I figure I get this all dialed in a week and other things within a half of a week or full week or a week and a half or two weeks or whatever. When you're looking at a project this size, months and months in advance, um, at least for me, it's in terms of one person's man hours. And so we've had Ed's help in here too, and he saved himself uh, quite a bit of money by being the other guy. If it's not a bunch of sweat, heavy lifting um, activity, but just being there to do this, do that, do this, do that, well, I've still got to pay someone handsomely uh, to be here with me for that. And so, like I say, he saves himself money. So let's time lapse this here. I'm just going to go back and forth. We're almost, we're like uh, 40 and a quarter, 40 and a quarter, and then we're at about 40, at 39 and a half, and like 38 or so here. Um, or between 38 and 39 somewhere. That's the lowest point, basically, there. Anyway, for now, you'll see me move back and forth between these, just going a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. I just want to get those. They're so close, and a lot of people might give up, but I want to get those in there where they belong. Lock this into the old uh, holder, and we'll do that. Okay, that's all the more that this one here wants to turn, basically. And so, it's either, because we've only made progress here on account of lifting down there, although, you know what, I take that back. I was about to say I'm going to have to give up here. But I could adjust that down tightly, the permanent one, loosen this guy off, come down to the other side here, because I just want to get... We're at a little over 40, and we settle a little bit when all the lifting comes out. And over here, we're at, you know, a full quarter of an inch beyond. And the whole, the whole goal here is level. <clears throat> so let's try and do that, you know. You got all this set up, all this time spent, and, you know, just not quite getting there is annoying. So just keep pushing. All right, I just want to prove it before I take the pressure off. I put as much as I could on the permanent post, most pressure, took as much weight, and plumbed it up as best I could. And we're right where we are over there now. And so the question is, you know, does that drop? I've never actually done this before, so let's do this, do this. Still getting a little creakage and poppage there. If I zoom in... On that tape, Ooh. look, I have this on here so that I can get up there. Sorry about the motion sickness, everybody. There we go. Nice and clean. And then we're looking for that. See if it changes now while I let the pressure off. Under pressure. Mm, can't tell you how much I've wanted to force this house to be straight. And a level. So it goes. All right, let's take this out. Wow. 
one loosey goosey. See all of that coming down with pressure on it still is technically pushing down some until it comes loose. I'm concerned. Well, we, we hung out we're over 40. There we are. Oh, we're loaded here. So we're getting some collateral squishage. All the squishiness. Hey, we're still technically over 40. So I'll take that. Call that a win. That's, this is why when we're within half of an inch to a quarter of an inch, which is ideal, um, we call it good because it's just, if you want to dial that to be exactly the same as the other one, you can spend another couple hours here at least and it just becomes uh, not crucial to the project. Let's leave you guys here and watch, we'll move that shore to the left and do a little more lifting on the rest of them. Okay, so let's look at this one now. As I let it down, just out of curiosity, if we lose anything. Oh, I gotta tighten it up to the floor first, so let me run and get the little stick for that. All right, they give you a stick uh, to turn this heavy type with, so it goes through the hole there, and then the whole foot turns, which is irritating to try and keep it plumb. So I got real close, and then rather than even using that, I threw this modestly sized, no, that's a crescent wrench, here it is. I threw this modestly sized, ooh, uh, monkey wrench, um, pipe wrench, it's a 10 inch or whatever, 8 inch, uh, so that we're not going crazy here. But I did throw some torque on it by just biting on the outer diameter of that. And then I beat it with a sledgehammer, just not hard, just using the inertia to dial it in to plumb exactly. And we're not on the location that the drawing calls out, like we discussed already, but. Um, Again, I could take a little weight off with these shores, all the way up until we pour the floor in here. I could take a little weight off with these shores and reposition these. It won't be a lifting operation, it'll just be removing the post operation. So, I don't exactly know where I want them right now, I just know that I want the beam level for other tasks. So, alright, keep an eye on that laser line and see how much we lose here when we're coming down.
sorry, there's a big hole over here. It makes it really hard to trust the footing. Pressure's off of that. Pressure's off of that. Oh, we lost. Almost a quarter of an inch, three sixteenths of an inch. Not bad. Still kind of where we want to be. All right, that's all the more I'm comfortable trying to force this up. I know I was talking a big game on the, uh, let's see, yeah. So we're right at 40 right now with everybody lifting underneath it. And some of the issues that we've got are like this shore on this side, I don't know, maybe I can show you. If it looks like I've been checking for plumb, I'm not really. I'm looking at the fact that, I don't know if you can see this, but like, there you go. Uh, it's bowed by like an eighth of an inch this way. A couple of those got tweaked there years ago when I uh, left a barn up overnight on them and I had it chained up, but we got a weird gust of wind You can go back and see in my catalog. Actually. I've got the aftermath, but you can see these shores in there Actually, no, I'm there the next day, but I came overnight to address the issue And so you don't get any footage I don't think of the of what I found right after the windstorm, but you can see that the building got uh, pretty twisted and so the shores have been tested and then after that I really twisted the other one um, by accident so that one is down for repair so since I haven't got a fourth one here for more power and I don't feel like stacking cribbing all the way up to put that big heavy-duty jack let's just um, zoom in again and we'll watch and see why is it the I'll just see if we lose anything there while I take this down. Okay. Made sure it was plumb and I cranked the shit out of it the base pipe wrench again. Just to give it a little more English. Out. And we might have moved a little bit from that. And then we'll take these out, try not to let that fall over. And that pressure kind of came right off of that one. So it would be nice to think, man, yeah, we're still close. I haven't lost a lot of head weight there. That's the nice thing about steel and concrete. Ooh, I can't even get the pressure off of this one. Huh. That's never happened before. Hmm. Yeah, 
sure what to do there. Get the pressure back in line. Hold it back up a little bit. business cracking the hub there see that that's not cool man I probably can't say anything to them because what they'll say is user error or using putting too much load on it so yeah how to um, get that out well I could take the other two away and then I could take this locking pin out and I can drive. Oh no, that pin is topped off. Huh, it doesn't pinch that pin tightly. That's interesting. Okay, I was going to say I could pop him out and get maybe a little more, take the weight off kind of suddenly. But um, we'll have to play around here and try to take the weight off of that one with these other ones and then get out of there and see what happens. Okay, so I was able to put some weight over there as well. And now we're loose here and here and there obviously but we lost we stand right in the laser how does light work uh we lost you know quarter of an inch almost or yeah definitely so that's what we have here right in the middle because right over here to the left we've got what we wanted at come on light the fuck over 40, over 40, I think we killed this a little over 40, or we could use a little bit of a tweak there also, and then over here, so the two, because this here is over 40 again, so these two, uno, dos, we could come down here with all the cribbing that's in my basement under load underneath the other one of those or the other two of those have each got a cribbing stack and they're loaded in my basement and we could go with my own cribbing as opposed to Sean's that he was using here and we could put those monstrosity massive HD shores under there and we could force it to go up the last little bit which honestly I'm inclined to do because it pisses me off that they think that they could muscle me just that far or just that close to, if not almost, practically. But we're to the one side of our pier here, if we're uh, where we should be. We're to the one side of our pier here, if we should where we should be. And we're nowhere near where we should be here because it would be off the pier, practically. And so I think that they want this underneath there, which would be like on that shoulder. So I think we got a clear little spot, which is practically done for us pour a little more concrete at some point. It'll probably be something that I do when they're here making mortar and we've got the water and the wheelbarrows and the mixing and everything's happening. Or maybe I'll ask him, you know what, that's what I'll do. See if the mason can pour me more pier and uh, fill in these holes with block and install all the windows, you know, and what's the price for that when the time comes. So for now, we're really darn close to level. I'm gonna break this lifting stuff out and or down and get it out and set aside for now anyway and we can pick up and build the drains oh no we got to do this side of the lumber hasn't arrived yet we got to reinforce this side of the stairwell i was about to shut this whole series or this episode down but hang on we're not done all right i'm just packing things up but i couldn't resist this plain laser again i'm able to catch the both edges of the i-beam Splitting that laser beam all the way down here. I actually have it on low power mode. I could turn it to high power mode. Maybe that would help 
this a little bit. There, super bright. I mean, it's right there. It's right there. It's right along the edges over there, and it's right along both edges to there. Now that is a fat post, but you can see it's right down the edge of the post. And again, it's right there. Look at the wall. See, it's right there. Bam. You can see it on the edges of the I-beam down there as soon as I bump it. So we are really nice and straight in here. I know it's Pride Month, but for real. Straight as an arrow, as well as quite plumb, since I'm catching both edges real well. So that's enough battery wasting and running my mouth about it. So let's break out that lumber. I'll see if that can't get here today. I better call and double check it's coming. All right, Ed's here. He's out there making uh, his sister Joyce because our lumber arrived. We did have to hand load it. Didn't end up with a Moffat truck with the fork left on it. So he's going to start over here. He's actually got one line there. And so what you can do is get a sense of you're going to go over into the rim joist on the one side or the other here if you're trying to fit a piece in next to these. Maximum length. So you can go tight to the rim joist and come over to the face of this concrete because you're going to have to slide by. And then you're going to move over so that it's centered in here and you're basically has, a, has an equal dimension of being too short on either end. Which is going to maximize the amount of purchase that you've got in terms of sitting on top of that sill. But it's going to be a piece that you can get in here. Um, you can try to bend, if you're in a real pinch, you can try to bend them or tw uh, twist it up in there and stuff. But you don't want to have to fight if you don't have to. So we got that length and so now he can go right up over till it stops, tip it up, come back, and if you figure out what the distance you can mark on the end of that piece with a pencil is, that you can look for the pencil line to line up with the edge of a sill on one end or the other, then once you do a cut, you can throw that line on for yourself, and so you want to come back in here, no matter what end you're on, as long as you're on the pencil end, you can go up and put the pencil edge on the sill, know right where you got to be. And the last thing I said was rather than, once it's lying flat, trying to tip it up in here, and you're having to hit the top of it past the next joist, trying to blast the top of it over, you, it's really difficult to get a hammer swing that comes at that angle of attack at the right angle. So what you want to do when lying flat, so not tipping up, but put this edge up in there and leave it open at the bottom, then smashing that bottom edge over until it's tight against this other joist is an easier strike because you're trying to strike the side of the bottom of the joist, if that makes sense. So that's the way that you want to try and roll stuff up if you can do that. Prior to that, we got this loop in. And I had to double down over here because this has such a belly in it, although it was stable, or apparently stable, because it had had that big slab across the two joists right after they had compromised the shit out of it for the heat and had a lolly column next to the stairs on the left when you came down. But since we lifted off of that, I don't think anything's been under it this whole time, which would mean it just was really baggy. We weren't walking around up there. So I doubled down here to lift up to be practically the same height, more most importantly on the other side of the stairway, because if the framing bottom surfaces or any other surfaces are level and coplanar here, it's going to force the ends of all the stairs and everything, if they're in there correctly, besides a little bit of dialing that somebody might have done initially with, them, with their install in the house, if the house is um, more level or level to a slightly different in areas differently from when it was constructed. It might push the stairs out permanently to that small degree, but overall, that's just a bit of a disclaimer, overall, making this framing and this framing on both sides parallel and level in the world will vastly improve the condition of the stairs and their geometry and their levelness and straightness and everything. So, that's our goal. Now over here, mm, I got under everybody, including this joist that's got a big chunk out of it. And then this one, as we talked about, has got that much out. And I had considered just ripping that off now, but it really is at that point then all the weight out on the ends of these boards, all the weight of that wall plate and the, and the whole stairwell and everything hang on the ends of these boards. It's in there now, this thing, and it's got sheer strength because it's been, theoretically, there's penetrations, there's hardware through this drywall into the side of it, which seems like not really a lot of strength, but it actually could be quite a lot of strength. Because dry, drywall along its edge, once you get away from the edge, is pretty strong when you point load it edgeways. And so that basically the drywall could be holding up out here quite a bit. And so before I beat it all off and, you know, I don't want to get in a hurry and just jump right into beating stuff off around here. But before I do all that, what I'm going to do is add 
a dug fur two by eight right in here on this face of that existing joist. I left myself the ability to do so here. We'll get a complete solid new dug fur two by eight from sill plate to beam first loose, I mean, but standing up on his edge. And then I'll have more confidence in tearing this outside edge apart, you know, because he could even be slid over some. Um, and then from the outside, we'll add another layer, at least if not a third, a third layer, for the three layers of solid dug fur. I gotta move those wires over, so if I can get one piece in here first, I was also thinking about how then I can take this stuff away and potentially even dig in and up over the plate and have a look at the scenario there and still have room to work to move them over. It would mean that I might have to move them over to the new stick, add a layer or two out here, and then take the new stick away to get them out from in between it. But at the end of the day, if we had two side by side out here, starting planer with the wall and then the next immediate one into a double, then if we skipped one inch and a half space to allow these to be routed and then immediately had at least one, if not another pair of dug for sticks. It won't help us keep the duct, that's gonna be a problem, but we've got too many electrical lines going straight up through this thing. We can't go through the beam by cutting, otherwise we're just compromising that piece. So we'll have to skip, even if we only skip, I was gonna say only a half an inch or something, but those are a little bigger than half an inch, plus they're not necessarily all lined up. Yeah, they're not bad. So maybe just like an inch, maybe we won't skip an entire inch and a half, you know, three quarters of an inch or something. The closer together, the better. It is just on a plate over a window hole, which is uh, interesting. I just noticed that. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> the window's not on the front. Uh, not necessarily exactly there, but yeah. Well, I'm just thinking that the stairwell beam is going to one layer plate over a window hole. Yeah. I'll have to ask everybody here, involved, yeah. We'll be in this room, oh yeah. And this so it'll light this room. Yeah. That one's Like I well, like I said, the glass block's gonna be as strong as the concrete block practically, so the window unit's not gonna be that much weaker. True. We'll have to see. It's not like it's a pane of glass, but yeah, we'll have to check that out. So in the meantime, that's the plan here.
Well, little Dashie, you've been a very patient boy, and Ed got all these joists sistered, except for this one. Since we want to be on the right side, I'll explain in a minute. We had a, a pocket we could go by with it on the left side, but that's if you go up perfectly vertical, which we aren't. We're going up flat, starting the top, and kicking the bottom over to start with, so that's got to be moved up or taken up through the floor to make some clearance, and probably have to take that inch and a half on this side of it to move the whole thing over. Uh, and so we'll get, thereby we'll get our uh, joist sistered there. Plus we don't have to contend with that water line right now. And um, being on this side means that we could continue on this side, this whole side of the house. We could be on the right hand side here, which will be good because see the left hand side has got the tail of the joist on the other side of the house here. So we'll be sistering on this side, which worked out perfect, real nicely. Uh, and I ran into a problem here because if you saw, I don't know when my battery gave out or Ed is having anybody else on the site, but Ed in particular, I love you, buddy, but, uh, it can be distracting just because there's questions all the time and stuff. I can barely keep my head in my game. So it's good. He took off. He got his stuff done. I got quite a bit done myself. We demoed this down and out of here. If anything, I'm picking up so much here that there's that opening. I haven't loaded this yet, which is good. Um, I'm going to want to attach it or attach all these together before I let the weight sit on it because I have a, a feeling it's going to want to pull back down again if I don't do that. So that's good. And the other problem though is that this electricity, um, I just, I've got to have two layers at the edge of this opening at least. And it means, that means that the face of it has to be planar with the ends of those boards so that drywall could come down past it if, if you want it. It's not a, it's not going to be acceptable to be under the edge of that drywall with this beam. It's not helping to carry any weight really. Uh, and it isn't the way that you do stuff. Framing should be coplanar and your finishes are applied to it. So that means that I want to move that over. Like I said, well, why don't you drill a hole uh, and, you know, over here and trim between them and make a pill shape and slide that over, make the room you need. Well, see the face of this, this is a three by 14 and a half duct or three by 14 or whatever they make them designed to go in a regular framed wall. And the face of it is planar with the back edge of the drywall. So I can't go past here or I'm out of the wall. And uh, I can barely move half of an inch. And it certainly doesn't make three and a half inches, which is two layers of LVL. Uh, it's worth of space here. It's only, in fact, if you don't believe me, I'll fucking prove it. If I hang on there, like where I could be with the, if I could move this side to there, I'd have three inches, which is, I need even more. So, and I don't want to do, be drilling up through the baseboard or the drywall on its edge behind the sofa up there someday. And, um, you know what I mean? And then someday somebody moves the sofa and there's like the, uh, you know, the edge of this. It's not, you don't want to be anywhere near a f surfaces with electrical. You wouldn't do that. So, Chaz, what are you going to do? Um, like over here is the sole plate to the wall and the studs on it. Same goes for here. Here's the floorboards, right? There is plywood over there because there weren't any boards there. So there's the floorboards here, and then there's the two by four sole plate, and then there's studs. So I'm gonna essentially snap a line right through this inside crack all the way over to here. This is the last electrical though, so I can go straight up here. I'm gonna expose this tomorrow, and I'm gonna go in there with a right angle drill, and I'm gonna drill a route through the studs, and I'm gonna go into the wall and turn this, and I'm gonna go through that route over there and I'm going to take those and go through their own route and we're all going to go into the exterior wall of the house over here and then we can come down in that wall's thickness into this space and we can turn left and we can go through either this wall or we could come down and you wouldn't hear because there's a window but if we wanted we could roll around and down into the thickness of this finished wall and head that way but again you won't because of the chimney so you'll just stay in here anyway we'll reroute it up in that wall and so I'm not set up to deal with much of that today, except for that's basically cut. I guess I'll put you over here. We'll finish the cutting down. We'll pull the drywall off, then it'll be about quitting time. And we'll reroute that tomorrow. We'll put our couple more layers in. We're going to obscure that heat duct for now. We're just going to solve that problem later because I can't be bothered to deal with it right now. I want this opening to be appropriately framed solid. Then this can come down 
and we've got all the structural, major structural issues handled. We've got some little tips that stick down over there to trim up, and um, we could get the we could go up a quarter of an inch on these two center posts. I don't I don't know if I mentioned mentioned that, but that would mean that we get the other big boy jack, the HD. And we bring some cribbing blocks in here, and we go up on cribbing blocks to there. And then we slide that short, fat boy in, and we just muscle him up, and actually in this location and that location, um, that last quarter of an inch. Because I just couldn't get these light-duty shores to go up like that. In retrospect, these have worked for me so often, but the, I'm missing the one because I overloaded him. And this other one, I think I may have shown, but it's tearing out. I'm going to try, and I wanted to stay ahead of that. We'll leave that just like that and see if I could get a repair made with a weld there first um, before it breaks right out. And so anyway, the point is I should have gotten the, heady, the HD series shores for, from, for these. These are 86 to 120 or something, I want to say, or 86 to 110. So, um, But if I had the HDs, they would bear 15 tons instead of 7. Um, and they would t they would carry it and carry it up too and take it up. So in retrospect, I could have gotten the heavy duty versions. I probably wouldn't have tweaked one of them by now. I'd have the power under these circumstances. But you know, the other thing that has bitten me with these is that 86 inches tall. They don't go in by my basement, and they don't go in a lot like this home originally. The depth basements that a lot of this area has, you can't get under the main beam. This dimension is you know 80, 82 or it's sometimes even less than that, but oftentimes just a hair under 86, and I can't get it from the floor to under this beam directly. So if I got the HD series for these to replace these someday, I'll probably get the next step down in length because they would reach as high as I usually need them to reach, but they'd be so much more powerful. So let's set up the time lapse, and I'll expose that wall, and then we'll get packed up and get out of here. All right, so I don't know what is going on here. This appears to be, I guess we could go right up and actually look at it. There appears to be some kind of soffit, or not soffit, um, alcove. Like they've turned, this, they've turned this, I can't, they've turned the stud sideways, and this appears to be the back of drywall. Although that is, what is that in there? Headlights dying. That's, looks like, that's wood. Baseboard, maybe? And then the wall is wood. I don't know what all is going on here. Uh, it was not, I expected to just have a studded wall, like that. Uh, this is the stuff. It's not that it can't be figured out what to do. It's just that, I was just about to finish the structural remediation. And we got all this. So this is the type of thing that irritates because customers always want to know the schedule of events and what. And, and then they would also say, oh, they know that things are going to change and stuff. But it's like, I don't even conceptualize. I don't want to say that I don't conceptualize the schedule. I have in my head a running order of what I want to do. The typical order I want to get foundation in good shape. Then I want to do the structural repairs in any kind of wood construction. And then I want to do the biggest plumbing drains on down to the smallest plumbing drains. Get that all draining away. Then I want to bring the water supply lines in to where they have to go all the way around. And then I want to get the wiring and get all the electrical done. Um, I suppose in this case, somewhere there, we've got to have the heating and air conditioning or the whatever forced air unit. So somewhere in there. And... Uh, I don't want to think about right now because I'm doing this but uh, and then you insulate and then you can cover the walls up so there's an order so, however if I'm thinking I'm just about to do something and people want to know so I tell them ah, okay hmm. 
this is what we're looking at down there. They wanted this uh, reveal or this turn around the corner because that's the wall thickness. And they did end the wall thickness and they want to expose the stringer is all Kate. They made the wall thinner, the framed wall thinner, turned the stud edge studs edge wise, and then capped it with millwork to expose that's balustrade for the stairway. Um, and who knows what the scenario is there? Obviously, I can go through here no problem and right on over to there. So it really isn't legitimate for me to run electrical through this. It's not wide enough. It's not thick enough to have an electrical uh, system going through it. So we may, in fact, have... Fuck, I can't. <laughs> okay, go back down and look. I couldn't imagine what that was. I never had noticed the feature. That was picturing... I don't know what I was thinking. But the way that the stairway and stuff is constructed is a little different than what you would do now. Um... So now that we've wrapped our head around, what is the issue? We use door string to pull the door shut. Leave that there for now. Instead of struggling. Talk to the concrete folks. And um, I think you'll notice this here is an acceptable overhang. It's bigger than ideal, but it's about an inch. And over here, uh, we can look at this together. He indicated that's about an inch up there also. I don't know if you can see my, I probably can't see. Uh, hang on. So that's, you know, an inch or so there. Um, and so I said, well, this is what makes me uncomfortable. It's like two inches right here to the outside edge of the original plate. And this here is like sitting up you know, it's tipping down. But the fact is, I checked for plumb out here. I skated along the face of the um, clapboard shape, and I looked at the door, and between that and looking at the door, it looked pretty plumb here. But we actually went around inside and threw a plumb a level on the face of the framing of the wall, and you can see that it has to come over. We pulled the plumb out to where it was reading plumb, and we needed an inch at the bottom. So it needs to be pulled over an inch. And then I got to thinking about it, and why didn't any other parts of the house wall change? They came straight off the foundation, old one, and they came straight down onto the new one. If you look at this wall, it practically doesn't continue over to the house. This aspect is controlling it for straightness, where the end of it dies into this plane, controls it for straightness. But over here, this door slab is in a hinge, and basically this whole thing can wangle dangle. And so if it got started or slid or bumped, see, because Sean also had pieces of lumber applied to the face of the framing inside so that he could lift under it. You know, he didn't get under, he couldn't get underneath through the old foundation and pick up. So we didn't have to have beam pockets here to get the beam out because he just screwed a two by 12 to the face of this wall and he got the beam underneath that and that's how we were lifting. However, it was over in here. But in removing that or anything else like that, this just got pushed out some. And so I'll just take the same strap that we used to pull the beam toward us. I noticed that I hadn't taken that down yet, so I'll get attached to that somewhere, and we'll go over to the wall here, and we'll attach way back there. So we're pulling practically straight on it, because I don't really have anything else over here. Unless I don't, if that doesn't work, I can back the skidster up and pull directly this way. Either way, we'll get that slid back onto the foundation, and it won't be a problem at all. We may have to add a little bit of concrete next to the pier uh, in the basement. I will bring this back in the back. If we want to move that post to directly and exactly where the architect asked me to place it. Um, the thing about that is I think it's to our benefit anyway. Because that um, intersection overhead where the new beam, uh, new steel and the new glue lamb, that intersection location is on the floor a better place to have a post. Um, when you're talking about, when you're talking about... Uh, the bathroom. Oh my god. god. Be an asshole. Fucking end of the leg was in the pocket on my tool belt. Okay. There you go. End of the day again. Real hot and bothered, little dash. Uh, this post location isn't ideal. 
it really should be over here. Our new beam, new beams and pow right underneath there because, um, how do I show you? The opening for the stairs. If you end up with a toilet or a sink or even just a room, I think we've decided we'll change the bathroom. It's not gonna be right under the stairs. But if you want to get in there, you don't wanna to have to squeeze the door to one side of the end wall of it or if you push the face of it for the door, you don't want the door way, even though it might swing in, to have this column just standing right here. It still forces your hand with the door location if you don't finish it out. And so anyway, sliding it over to be basically coplanar, then this wall could essentially come right through this post as well. And this wall could. And so even if you don't and you make big cutouts, that lying in the same plane in both aspects as these walls that are in here or these poles are in here, it makes it a lot less messy. Right now that post location is a bit messy. He just needs to be over here. So that means we need more pier is what I'm getting at. And that was something else we talked about. And really I can mix up. I can hand mix. I think when the Mason's here, like I said, um, we'll do that. So it's been going on for a couple of weeks shooting this segment because I wanted to get the whole concept into one video. And I am gonna keep going here until I'm ready to roll on that being finished too and take this crap out of here. That's my goal on this one. So we're gonna keep going here. Stick with me. I may have to cut some fat out of here where I forgot the camera was on for hours and hours or something. But uh, not today. All right, last night I determined that I wanna route that electrical elsewhere and we ran into this thin area which was done like we looked at upstairs. Um, so that they had that millwork wrap for the exposed balustrade on the stair. And essentially, I'm just going to run this circuit through the center line of those as long as I can and then jump. I mean, that space up there, up here, is that first step or two up. This house has got this landing at the wall where it's a step or two down in both directions and this functioned as a hot air which is just blowing all this filth so we're gonna have to do something about this when we come back to heat the house however uh, there isn't a lot of concern here because it's a finished room the baseboard is up because the, the, the question becomes what happens if you try to nail baseboard or something else through here and you hit one of these electrical lines in this shallow wall uh, to start with, it's that armored cable, and yada, yada, yada. I'm not going to go to a lot of other trouble here. I'm just going to drill that quickly, route that cable through there, and get this beam in here. And, you know, if the town wants to know what's up, I'll just say that's, you know, how it always was. And it, to start with, it's armored, and if you were to shoot a brad nail, I don't think it was going to go through there. It'll probably uh, bend around it or not go all the way in. So... That's how we'll get through this part. This stuff is a no issue, non-issue because this is a conventional wall, especially behind that step. We'll get over there and through the floor and turn into the center line of the floor system and head wherever. I mean, I'm just going to literally get through somewhere there. Maybe I'll go right through the beam itself. No. That's a good question. Because once again, I still have to get through... And we're right on this window opening. Um, hmm. We'll see. Well, yeah, that's fine. I can, as long as I'm in the thickness of this wall, I mean, we're going to have a framed wall in front of that. So anywhere here, I can actually, from there back, I can come through into this space. Then I get my layers through here and I can drill through all my layers and put this stuff through all the layers over the hole in the window. It's not really where you want stuff routed, but it is where we're going to have to put it. And we're headed that way because that's the direction that the panel's in. Um, and we're gonna have to play games with like continuity checking and seeing what goes where around the house and getting an elegant uh, solution for reconnecting everybody. So for now, we'll get the electricity out of my face. We'll put a couple more layers of Doug fur in here and then we will shoot them all together where they're flush on the bottom to make a unit and then we'll let the pressure off and pay attention when we sit down here. Um, actually, I could go with Reckless Abandon now. I could put all four sticks of Doug fur that we bought. There's the other three there. I'm going to put all four sticks in here because they're not LVL. 
Um, it's not the exterior wall, but I just like to see this area really beefy. And I bought the lumber already, and we've got the room for it. So, time I move the electricity, there's no reason this can't be solid wood. And it, the hope is that it skips the, uh, the necessity for another post next to the stairwell. I'd like to think that we can skip that. Um, because there's been no mention of it in the architectural drawing so far. Even though there was one there before, it was because, again, this thing had been compromised. So enough blabbing. Let's buckle you guys in, and we'll watch me do this, because it's not like you haven't been bored to death already. All right, that's out and around, out of my way for now. It can be handled later. This just makes it to here, which means we'll have to do a junction here somewhere, uh, and it'll have to have a, it'll have to be blind covered here if this area is finished. Once again, we're not gonna exhaustively finish all kinds of stuff uh, for this project because it's just a big chunk of change to get the meat and potatoes of it done. So we got that routed. It looks about like you'd see um, something routed from this era, you know, uh, it doesn't jump out at me as being unexpected. In fact, it's not right in a, in a certain sense, but, um, it's a whole hell of a lot better than what was going on before. And it's going to solve our problem for right now. And, uh, it's a best case scenario being the armored wire. And so I'm just going to leave off on that before I perjure myself further. <clears throat> Sorry about that frog in the throat. Uh, I gotta go get Ed, because he's gonna help me put these in, coming up at that slight angle to get over and then come back onto the plate. Uh, I've gotta actually put a short bevel. See the top of that joist has got a little down angle on it, right there, shoop. So that helps lead me up and over without that top corner jamming into the side of the floorboards. And so, with that, I kind of need to be on both ends, so I'll have to have his help. And then we'll just tap this in, and then I'll tap it back this way. He can keep it lined up to going back on the sill. I can't do that over here and tap it back that way from this end. So we'll need his help. We'll get the rest of the layers in. We'll break this um, uh, temporary beam down. And then he's going to probably continue sistering. He's going to have to clean up the bridging and stuff out of here and some more electrical and stuff. But he can continue wailing on that. And we can cover this last little bit and call it an end of this video. It's coming, guys. Here, here he comes. It's coming. It's coming pretty soon. I'm going to let you off the hook.
So we're currently flushing the toilet into a tub over here and then flushing it a few more times to rinse it out. You but tell the world? Yep, I'm gonna tell the world. Welcome to my embarrassment. No. Um, we didn't clean them apparently before Edward was sick, so okay. It was a rather remember we were, we It was a extenuating circumstance. We were going to Massachusetts for three or four days we had almost two weeks. We were going to be back. Before the house was lifted. And he got he sick before he left. I, I, All right. No, well, I'll check this out. Oh We're going to transport this out to the garden. All right. We'll do that a couple more times with cleaner water, hopefully. But as soon as I saw that first uh, flush, I knew it's going to be more than you want to try and handle it. Uh, like that when it's uh, six or nine gallons worth of water. No, thank you. Um, the subfloor area there was replaced with regular pine boards that aren't tongue and groove. And uh, they notch to here, but not to the actual tongue and groove portion. And so there's no support on this board along this edge. There's nothing supporting these out here and nothing supporting it along over there. It's all just a tang hanging out in space just a cantilevered surface with the toilet sitting on it, which has been leaking. And so this is a case where you really, really genuinely could, movie style, that floor could fail to the one side and dump the toilet over at an angle as it breaks through and off and down. And uh, it's just ridiculous. We've got to cut these back over into the center line of this joist, across here and across here and over to the, I'm not doing all that. We're gonna, cause we got a doubler here now, so that's ideal, okay. So we're gonna cut right down through the seam of this double. We're gonna take these boards away. We're gonna open this up further to that edge of that actual full board. We're gonna go to the center line of this, will end up with a double on it actually eventually. So we're gonna go to the actual face of this so that the repair is 100% on this sister and the old existing boards are 100% on the previous or whatever, whatever, and then we'll put a new toilet flange. Careful, getting crazy with that. We'll put a new subfloor repair in. We'll stick a new three inch flange to the floor like it should be, and then we can plumb over here and down through this wall. But first we gotta flush a couple more times. Oh yeah, now she's running clear. That's practically drinkable again. Something smells like shit. <laughs> All right. I'm pleased to say that we have achieved structural soundness, structural integrity. That's just Ed closing the door. What's that? And the doors close. Good. Um, I had to fight with this a little bit because in just sending four layers up, I ended up, b b b I need to be careful with the angle here. I sent four layers up, but I ended up behind the framing of that wall. And really this needs to sh be, um, flush. And so down here to start with, it was easier. I tapped everybody out until flush and then pinned up into the edges of the floorboards just to hold it there as well as pinning up through the plate. <clears throat> Over here, we were an inch back or so. So I had to rip off the old joist. You could see the shadow from him there. He was the one that was notched. He was the last layout joist that was notched before the edge joist that was notched. Um, I ripped him out of the way, and then I could beat on this whole group to go that way, but it still didn't want to go. It was being pinched so much here in the center of the house here. And so I came over with these shores since I was done with them there because I had enough layers here. And I lifted on here and on there, which I was happy that those had gone long. I mean, this one goes right over. Again, early on this series, I was waffling on whether to get all the way to here or, you know, I could have, like I said, come all the way back there, but then I would have been collaterally taking weight off of this less by lifting on it here. So here I am glad that I ended up with that much extra because it was helping relieve the pressure here so that I could finally beat him over to being aligned to the back of the plaster. It's not drywall and it is thicker than drywall, but we'll just use a three. If you want to finish it in the future, you can plane out with thicker drywall or two layers of three eighths or, or whatever you got to do there or one five eighths inch sheet. But for now it's planar with the framing. It's four layers, but it, I did 
over here last yesterday, last yesterday, we've realized that we're over top of the window hole in one piece of plate, which has been compromised a little bit with the chainsaw because Sean wanted to get something of his out of the way, so he chainsawed it. So, sorry, that's so bright. It's that late sun, late afternoon sun on the house next door. So, we'll likely have a second layer, and we'll be on glass block at least, if not solid concrete block, which vertically I don't think there's a great deal of difference Probably some degree of difference, certainly in a Lowe's brand group of glass block window units rather than a builder, you know, mason store glass block, structural glass block, which we may have to go with in this case if we wanted to keep a window look there. So we'll find out what exactly we've got to do to carry the fire into that. But we've been up there already. It's solid and lovely and wonderful. I'm going to take the pressure off of these. And then, um, like I said, we've got the doubles happening. It's going to keep going. We're going to pick up there now, Ed and I, but for now other than just taking some bounce out of the floor. We have a first floor system that has got a great degree of level for the age of this house and the degree of you know, effort that's gone into achieving it. Um, we're easily inside three quarters of an inch on the plane of the first floor as far as the framing goes. And, um, and so if there's been extra layers and blends and stuff done upstairs that you know can be fixed in the future. But for now, we're in really nice shape structurally, so the next step is plumbing drains. And, uh, you know, we're going to have to get this toilet and, like I said, get over and down and then talk about where laundry and uh, basement bathroom plumbing goes and then get it out of here and then get our mini excavator and get to the road and get our water back in that trench and get to the hot water tank. And then we'll have water here again, and we can flush it down the toilet, and Ed can come back and live. And uh, that's kind of what we're going to be all next week. But that's an end of structural, major structural repairs. Thanks for watching. We'll see you.